In this video, we're going to talk about why the moon goes through phases and why at different times you'll see the moon at different places in the sky. So we're going to start with a view of the Earth above the North Pole. And when we do this, the Earth rotates in a counterclockwise direction. Uh, it's also helpful that when we zoom out in a second, we see the moon, the moon will also orbit in the same direction that the Earth rotates. So they'll both move counterclockwise, not at the same pace, uh, but both will move in the same direction direction. So we're going to bring in some sunlight here so that we see that the left side of that earth is in daytime and the right side is in nighttime. And now we'll draw an orbit for the moon and we'll drop the moon in there. And you can see uh, that just like the earth, the left side of the moon is illuminated by the sun and the right side would be in dark. And you can see those labeled here. So there's the daytime side of the moon. That would be the nighttime side of the moon. So let's send the moon in orbit around the Earth, something like this. Uh, it turns out this is not the correct way to show the moon's orbit because the daytime side always needs to face the sun. When we orbit the moon around the Earth like that, we can see that the daytime side is not always facing the sun. So let's change that, and now let's watch a more correct version of the moon's orbit around the Earth. And as you can see, the daytime side always faces the sun, and the nighttime side of the moon is always away from the sun. So now let's talk about what you would see from the Earth. So we'll keep the moon right here. Let's drop an observer in. And so this person's going to look up uh, kind of in the middle of their sky and see the moon. Um, and let's think about what they would see from the Earth. And this can be a tricky thing to kind of put yourself in the perspective of an observer that's in the screen. And so let's draw this line here, which represents that green line across the moon represents um, the part of the moon that the person on the Earth sees. So obviously they don't get this overhead view that we have. They're looking up from the Earth and they can see everything below that green line. Um, let's also add a little bit of reference. So for that person, we're going to say that the left is their left and the right is their right, which I guess kind of makes sense. So what they would see looking up at that moon is this. They would see the left side of the moon illuminated by the sun and the right side in darkness, right? Um, so now let's let that moon move in, some, in, in a little part of its orbit over to here. And let's drop in another observer who's going to look up at that moon. Again, they're looking up at the moon. This green line represents the part of the moon that they can see from Earth. And so what we can see here is they can see a little bit on the left side. They can see a little bit of the daytime side of the moon, but most of what they see is the dark side of the moon. And so when they look up, they see this crescent moon, just a little bit of the daylight side peeking around. Uh, but mostly they see nighttime side of the moon, or they can't see nighttime, nighttime side of the moon. It just happens to be facing us. Uh, it's probably important to note that everybody on the Earth who, looked at, who could see the moon would see the moon in the same phase. Uh, this diagram isn't to scale, so it looks like maybe they would see something slightly different. Um, but in real life, the moon is far enough away that everybody on the Earth sees the moon in that same crescent phase in this example. Uh, let's move it again, move the moon down here, and we'll bring in another observer. Parachuting in from the moon, uh, and they're going to look up at the moon. Here's our green line. So again, they can see the half of the moon that's facing toward the Earth. Um, and left and right can be a little tricky here because... Uh, it's the same person, or this, the observer's in the same perspective. They just rotated around the Earth. So let's bring our left and right this way. And so what this person is, would say is that the right side of the moon is illuminated by the sun, and the left side is in darkness. And this is the opposite of what the person on the other side of the Earth saw. And we'll check out one more. Move the moon over here. Let's have all of our observers gather up so they can see that moon. Uh, this one's kind of the easiest because everybody on Earth looks up at that moon. If we draw a green line, uh, they can see the part of the moon that's facing the Earth. And in this case, we don't even need to worry about left and right because everybody can see the full illuminated daytime side of the moon. 
Um, and again, everybody on Earth who can see the moon would see the moon in this same phase. So this moon, we can start with this one. This is what we call the full moon. And if we work our ray around the moon's orbit, we would see uh, this one. We could see mostly daytime and a little bit of night. This is called a waning gibbous moon. Waning means the moon is getting smaller. Uh, we move up here. Uh, this is a third quarter moon. You could call it a waning quarter moon. Uh, this is the one we started with. An observer on the Earth would see the left side of the moon lit by the sun and the right side dark. This one is a waning crescent. This is where they could see just a little bit of the daytime side peeking around. Um, in this moon, the part of the moon that faces the Earth is not at all illuminated by the sun, so we don't really see anything in this phase. This is a new moon. And now as the moon starts to get bigger, we call it a waxing moon. So here they can see a little bit of light on the right side. And now the right side is half lit, or sorry, the face of the moon, the right half is lit and the left half is dark. And then finally, we work our way around to the waxing gibbous, where we can see mostly daytime and just a little bit of nighttime of the moon. Um, what I want to switch to next is kind of a computer animation of this, which does a pretty good job of showing this in action. So we're going to start on the full moon, and we'll just that let that moon orbit around the Earth. And in this case, you can see the Earth's rotation is much faster than the motion of the moon, but very gradually... What we see from the Earth is going to change. So now we're moving into our waning gibbous moon. And now our third quarter moon. Our waning crescent moon. And then a new moon. And now we're rotating around. We're getting bigger. Here's our waxing crescent moon. First quarter. Waxing gibbous moon. And now we're back to full. So let's talk about the timing of this a little bit. Uh, in real time, one complete cycle of moon phases takes 29 days. So from a full moon to the next full moon or from a waning crescent to the next waning crescent, um, there's 29 days between a phase and the next time you get back to that moon phase, uh, which means between these pictures we've drawn here, there's about three or four days uh, between these images. So if we take that full 29 day cycle and divide it into eight pieces. Maybe it's helpful to look at a calendar view of this. So this is October of 2018. Uh, so right there on the third of that month, we had our waning quarter moon or our third quarter moon. Um, three days later, we were at our waning crescent moon. And you can see it changes gradually between each one of those. So uh, there's really sort of a judgment call of when you decide, yeah, we're a quarter moon, now we're a crescent moon kind of a thing. Um, three or four days later, we're at a new moon. Three or four days later, now we're getting bigger. Now it's a waxing crescent moon. Our first quarter, waxing gibbous, and then a full moon there on the 25th. Uh, and then the cycle starts again, right? Uh, the 27th, 28th, we're looking at a waning gibbous. Uh, back to our third quarter moon, probably going to happen on November 1st, uh, and then so on. And let's talk for just a minute about how do you know if the moon is waxing or waning? Uh, remember, waxing means it's getting bigger, it's headed toward a full moon, and waning means what we can see of the moon is getting smaller, and it's headed toward a new moon. So if we look at this little uh, span of moon phases here, we kind of have two groups. The left side, those are waxing, uh, and the right side, those are waning. So one way to remember this is if it's bright on the right, uh, that's a waxing moon. So the waning moon is the opposite. It's bright on the left. Um, another trick you can use, we know that this one, because it's bright on the right side, that one is waxing, and this one is bright on the left side, so that's waning. Uh, if you hold up your finger to the moon like this, if the moon likes a lowercase b, uh, that stands for bigger or beginning, uh, that's a waxing moon. It's getting bigger. If it makes a lowercase d, you can think of done, uh, and that is a waning moon. So those are just two little tricks you can use to tell if the moon is waxing or waning. So I hope that clears some things up about why we see the moon go through phases and why we see it at different places of the sky at different times.